Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Chuck Schumer just caught on tape saying something unthinkable about Trump. Chuck Schumer had no clue when he was in the Senate yesterday that he had left his recording microphone on. Whoops. Worse for him, he dropped a doozy about President Trump that has everyone talking. When Senator Schumer was at his post talking to his colleague, he accidentally let slip that he thinks Trump likes him. That's right, y'all. Schumer said, he likes us. He likes me anyway. That's pretty funny right there considering clearly he is saying President Trump is not a fan of Nancy Pelosi. Chuck Schumer also claimed he gave the president advice on how to run the country. Here's what I told him. I said, Mr. President, you're much better off if you can sometimes step right and sometimes step left. If you have to step just in one direction, you're boxed. He gets that dot and it'll make us, the country, more productive too. This proves that the Democrat leadership really are willing to work with the president. This is a good thing since it allows him to keep the country running until the congressional Republicans get their stuff together and get something done. In last year's campaign, Donald Trump promised he would be the president of all Americans and that he would work with Dems and Republicans to save the country. He has kept that promise, and even Republicans are getting it together now. No matter how you slice it, this is good news for America. That's why we need to get it to every Republican and Democrat in our family and friends fast. Ben Carson just went on TV and said the one thing Democrats didn't want him to say. Ben Carson said that he's a big picture kind of person and that the Confederate statues don't bother him at all. God bless Ben. If you remember, Ben Carson's home was vandalized earlier this summer when he was away. We were out of town and our house was toilet papered, Carson told News 4's Megan Fitzgerald. They had painted F. Trump on it as well. They were most likely liberals. Share this everywhere if you are so glad that Ben Carson takes as much crap as he does. He is a frickin' hero. Harvard offers Chelsea Manning Fellowship, but what they did next will devastate her forever. Earlier this week, Harvard's John F. Kennedy School of Government offered Chelsea Manning a speaking role at their campus, and people were not happy about it. After news of the invitation broke, former CIA director Mike Morrill resigned from his own fellowship post at the school. He claimed that he would not associate with a campus that honors a convicted felon and leaker of classified information. In response to the backlash, Harvard responded in the only sensible way. They uninvited Manning from their campus. We invited Chelsea Manning because the Kennedy School's long-standing approach to visiting speakers is to invite some people who have significantly influenced events in the world even if they do not share our values and even if their actions or words are abhorrent to some members of our community," said Dean Douglas Elmendorf. However, I now think that designating Chelsea Manning as a visiting fellow was a mistake, for which I accept responsibility. Finally, some sensible words from academia but that doesn't get them off the hook for inviting Manning in the first place. Manning responded on Twitter by accusing Harvard of being a military state, which doesn't make much sense. But then again, neither do most of the traitor's tweets. Share to show that Manning is no hero. Manning is a convicted felon and should be treated as such. What this Republican secretary just found in Oregon means Trump was right. This is huge. Now that Republicans are in power, we can find voter fraud that can be investigated. After defeating leftist Brad Avakian last year, Dennis Richardson has now found several cases of voter fraud. From the Secretary of State newsletter the following statement was released. 
my office is utilizing new technological tools that will improve election integrity. Through complex data matching techniques, the Elections Division identified 46 voters in the November 8, 2016 election who appear to have cast ballots in both Oregon and another state. Also identified, were ballots submitted under the names of six deceased Oregon voters and two registered Oregon voters who each cast two ballots in Oregon. Although there is no evidence that these fraudulent ballots impacted the outcome of any contest, no level of voter fraud is acceptable. Evidence supporting these findings has been turned over to the Attorney General's Office for Criminal Investigation and Prosecution. Intentionally voting twice is a felony punishable by up to five years in prison and up to a $125,000 fine. Every Oregonian who is eligible to vote should be able to vote. We must use all tools available to ensure election integrity so that the votes of those who are eligible to vote are not diluted by those who are breaking the law. The timing of this is curious and comes just three days after Trump's Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity spent $500 to get Oregon's voter roll list, which anyone can buy for $500. Secretary Richardson previously told President Trump that there was no voter fraud in the state. He is now singing a different tune. I'm pleased to report that in Oregon we have reviewed the processes and we are confident that voter fraud in last November's election did not occur in Oregon, Richardson wrote to Trump. In short, elections in Oregon cannot be hacked. Share this everywhere, patriots. We need to clean out the voter rolls and make sure that everyone voting is part of the stand country. The minute this black Trump supporter said two words on CNN, they cut the feed. Black Trump supporter Diane Johnson attended the mother of all rallies in Washington, D.C., on Saturday. Trump supporters went there to celebrate American patriotism. CNN interviewed Johnson and asked about Trump supporters wearing no white guilt t-shirts. Watch what happens the minute that Dante Johnson said that white Americans shouldn't feel guilty for what happened in the past. CNN cut the feed. Every time they have a guest say something that they don't like, they cut the feed. CNN is the communist news network and they didn't want to give a voice to a black Trump supporter. It'll ruin the narrative. Share this to expose CNN's disgusting bias. This is not the first time they have done this. Comment turn off CNN below if you are tired of their propaganda. No more visas. Trump's latest unexpected immigration restriction will have liberals fuming. President Trump has been trying very hard to mitigate the number of dangerous people coming into this country. Unfortunately, left-leaning courts have been fighting as hard as they can to keep them coming. Luckily President Trump has some tricks up his sleeve to get around them while the court battles are being fought. President Trump asked the State Department to restrict visas given to applicants from Cambodia. Eritrea, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. Why? Because those countries don't take back their own nationals when the U.S. is trying to deport them. Acting Secretary of Homeland Security said in a statement, International law obligates each country to accept the return of its nationals ordered removed from the United States. Cambodia, Eritrea, Guinea, and Sierra Leone have failed in that responsibility. The United States itself routinely cooperates with foreign governments in documenting and accepting its citizens when asked, as do the majority of countries in the world. However, these countries have failed to do so, and that one-way street ends with these sanctions. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Acting Director Thomas Holman backed her up, saying, American citizens have been harmed because foreign governments refuse to take back their citizens. These sanctions will ensure that the problem these countries pose will get no worse as ICE continues its work to remove dangerous criminals from the United States. Secretary of State Rex Tirson has asked U.S. consular offices in those countries to restrict certain visas, with different restrictions for each country, mostly temporary B visas for tourists. Tirson also warned that if those countries continue to violate international law, restrictions will become more severe. That's how it's done, folks.
I have no idea why this wasn't done earlier by another president, but I'm glad we have someone in the White House ready to stick up for we the people. Share it out if you agree. H.T. Washington Examiner GOP congressman just exposed a sick new leak on General Kelly this week. Leakers have been plaguing President Trump's White House in an attempt to undermine the Trump administration. Many members of the Trump administration have vowed to find and prosecute any leakers. Several suspected leakers have already been sacked, and the number of leaks has gone down considerably. That being said, there still appears to be someone giving away sensitive information in the White House. As Rep. Dana Rauerbacher said someone leaked information about a call he had with White House Chief of Staff John Kelly. The call was about Kelly's visit with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. In the leak, Rauerbacher implied that he could make a deal with Assange, including possibly a pardon, in exchange for information that proved Russia did not hack the 2016 election. Assange has frequently asserted that the DNC email drove he posted on WikiLeaks did not come from Russia. Rauerbacher said he would not confirm any quotes, but suspected someone inside the White House or in an intelligence agency was the source of the leak, telling the Washington Examiner. I don't know who it is, all I know is I'm up against an array of very powerful forces, including the intelligence services and major newspapers that are basically allied with the liberal left who have every reason to undermine communication on this issue. These leaks are beyond sick they're bad for the president, the government, and the nation. They must be stopped at all cost. Luckily President Trump's administration is on the case. The leaks have already been mitigated, but it looks like there is still more work to do. Sick of leaks? Share it out, patriots. Height Washington Examiner Nobody noticed the nuclear surprise Trump had hidden for North Korea in yesterday's speech. Some people in the mainstream media may think that President Donald Trump is a bit too hard on North Korea. Trump doesn't care one bit about their opinion, though, and yesterday he made it very clear. During his speech celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Air Force, Trump talked about our dominance in the sky all while standing in front of a very clear message. He was standing in front of a nuclear-capable B-2 stealth bomber. Not only that, but he also warned all of our enemies that if they hear our Air Force it means that the day of reckoning is upon them. That should scare the crap out of old Kami Jong-un. Our aviators have given America total dominance of the air and space no matter where we fly. Now when our enemies hear the F-35S engines, when they're roaring overhead, their souls will tremble and they will know the day of reckoning has arrived. Y'all know what I think? I think it's time we let the leftist media go on thinking whatever they think because Trump's actions speak louder than their words. Let's show the whole world that America is done backing down by sharing this out everywhere. Trump did his part, now it's your turn.